It begins and ends with a baden. Hello agents, I'm Susanna Moyer and this is the Ingress Report. I have one last update before I head to Oakland. I'll be there this weekend to cover the Abaddon finale and see this journey which has held the fate of nearly every Niantic researcher in the balance to its end. I won't be there alone. I have confirmed reports that Hank Johnson, the archaeologist, former Special Forces operative and now leader of 13 Magnus will be there as well. I've also learned that the man who awoke the world to the dangers and opportunities of exotic matter by creating the Niantic investigation, Pierre Chapeau, will be continuing his pursuit of the truth at the Abaddon Anomaly in Milan. In Okinawa, where the finale anomalies will begin, intelligence operatives are preparing for a likely transmission from Ada, the artificial intelligence who was created at the Niantic project, but expanded far beyond her initial scope in the months that followed. In addition, in Oakland and Okinawa, agents will be able to take part in physically challenging GORUCK training operations in an attempt to control crucial intelligence for their factions. The finale anomalies will take place on Saturday, December 12th in Okinawa with satellites in Seoul, Singapore and Wellington, in Milan with satellites in Gdansk, Porto and Sofia, and in Oakland with satellites in Fort Worth, Lima and Phoenix. Each of these anomalies holds the fate of someone incredibly powerful and influential at stake. In Okinawa, Ada, who is believed to have uploaded herself into the vast Nazir computational substrate, may now be poised to unlock the very nature of the universe. In Milan, Roland Jarvis, the deceased spiritual leader of the Enlightened Movement, who some believe continues to extend his influence through a trans-dimensional bond with a woman known as the Acolyte. And finally in Oakland, Ezekiel Calvin, the man who created the Niantic Project Research Group as a guise to study XM, but may in fact have been planning to strike a blow against the Shapers in a war that has lasted for thousands of years. Each of these individuals has a value of four in the Abaddon Anomaly series, the highest stakes of all. The series currently stands at four to nine, with the resistance leading, following their victories at the Abaddon Anomalies in November. P.A. Chapeau recently wrote a thorough and insightful history of the conspiracy that lies at the heart of Abaddon, and I highly recommend that all agents read it. What has become clear is that each of the Niantic researchers was forcibly turned into a simulacrum, an immortal XM being, by Calvin during the Niantic project. Abaddon may be in fact the code name for a secret lab where their real bodies are being stored. According to Chapeau's analysis, if the Resistance control the Abaddon series, all the Niantic researchers may remain simulacra in order to better serve the Nazir's purposes. However, if the Enlightened prevail, the anti-Magnus technology may be defeated, returning all the researchers to their human form. Either way, when Abaddon comes to an end, I suspect that we will be able to reunite those researchers with their memories and identities that have been trapped in the portal network since the Shonen incident. Much rests on your shoulders this weekend, agents. I can only wish you good luck and hope that you're aware of the consequences of your actions and the responsibility you bear for humanity's future. Meanwhile, agents around the world continue to share stories of their adventures. In New Taipei City, following the Abaddon Anomaly there, agents came together for a mission day to explore the hidden gems around them and to take in the sights and sounds of Christmas Land, a section of the city which had been decked out in a beautiful array of colourful lights. A group of enlightened agents also created a huge comet field art installation, leveraging hundreds of links in a starburst for its tail. Over 50 agents were involved in the op, including Emily 0303, Tizzy Cat, Keyboard Pro and Counting Crow. In Lithuania, a small group of resistance agents built a heart out of fields for the wedding of two fellow agents. And in Japan, a cross-faction group built a supernova using over 1,000 links to celebrate the arrival of a new baby agent and the news of another due in March. On the French island of Parma, over 20 resistance agents, including Neo Legions, Katsu84, Serial, and Julian B, launched Operation Three Palms, creating 13 layered fields and controlling over 12 million mind units. In Costa Rica, a group of resistance agents executed Operation 18. The op followed three months of planning, braving snakes and rain, to throw an 18-layered field and control over 600,000 mind units. Agents involved included Lemic one Lucky CR and CJRA. To celebrate Agent DMG-13's birthday, enlightened agents in Lake Michigan launched Operation Cupcakes and Candles, throwing six fields over the difficult-to-control region and controlling 1.8 million MU. Agents involved included Reedling, DMG-13, Dirty Wartleby, 
and City Girl 1414. Resistance agents from nearly 20 countries coordinated for Operation Blue Volcano, building multi-layered fields over Norway, Sweden, Denmark and parts of Poland, Germany and Austria. 155 million MU were controlled in seven layers and the longest link thrown was nearly 4,000 kilometers long. Hundreds of agents were involved, including Sorga 2000, Blue Swan, Godspeed 1975 and NetUser. In Washington state, dozens of enlightened agents worked together to launch Operation Emerald Top Band, leveraging SoftBank Ultralinks to throw a dense network of fields 123 layers deep and control 117 million mind units. Agents involved included Galadron, Force Triangle, the Star Figment and Alicat 81. And finally in Germany, agents prepared for the launch of the new Star Wars movie by completing official missions in 10 cities across the country. Agents were required to brush up on their Star Wars history to answer the tricky questions contained within each mission. As winter descends on the northern half of the world, Glider Gloves has launched a special edition of conductive gloves to enable agents to continue their adventures through severe weather conditions with comfort and safety. You can find a pair at shop.ingress.com, the only source for official Ingress gear. Agents, we've crossed over 100,000 subscribers to the Ingress YouTube channel. Help us reach even more by subscribing and giving this video the thumbs up. I look forward to seeing many of you in Oakland this weekend. For the Ingress Report, I'm Susanna Moyer. Our journey will take us to the furthest reaches of the universe.